Hi you guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new around here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit the notification button to be notified for all my future videos. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing some of my favorite perfumes, scents that I cannot live without. There's some from back in the day when I was in my teens that I'm still obsessed with and then there's other ones that I've added to my collection. I cannot pass by a fragrance counter without stopping by to see what they have especially if the bottle's pretty, I'm just gravitated towards it. And I've created a collection that I'm actually really proud of, and every time I go to purchase one perfume, I end up going home with five. I just feel like perfume is such a huge part of who a person is. I remember people and situations through smell, and I always remember how people smelled the first time I met them. I feel like my brain is attached to smell in a very strong way, and I just remember things through smell. The scents that I usually gravitate towards always have some kind of musk in there, um, amber, vanilla, anything that's like sugary, and I also really love a mix of woody smells. I have a collection that goes through the entire spectrum from very woody to very uh, vanilla-y and sugary. Um, and lately, although I've never really been into floral smells, I feel like lately I'm gravitating more towards anything that also has rose in there, peony in there, or any kind of iris, which I never really thought I was into, but I feel like the mix of the sweet with all of those floral scents just goes really well together. So without further ado, let's get into my favorite scents, and I'm not going to be sharing all of them because there is a huge collection. Um, but I am going to go through the ones that are my favorites. First on my list is the latest purchase I made, which is Greenwich Village from Bond Number no. 9. I love everything from the way the bottle looks. The scent is just intoxicating. Everything about this bottle is so beautiful and it's such a unique scent. I feel like when I smell this, I just want to breathe it all in and just keep spraying it all over like my house and everything just because it has such a unique scent it's very sweet but at the same time i feel like it has this um really feminine after smell i'm gonna read some of the notes um that it has in there i'm gonna probably mispronounce most of these but it has casey's leech uh mandarin peony water lily patchouli jasmine petals ambrox peach musk oh i love peach and i love musk uh, vanilla, oak moss, and praline. Um, it runs about $440 for this particular bottle, but it is so worth it. It literally smells like luxury in a bottle. I feel like every time I wear this, there is no way that people don't ask me what I'm wearing. It's so intoxicating. The way all the notes just come together in harmony is so beautiful and the way that it smells is something like I've never smelled before. Okay, this next scent, I know everyone and their mom wears it, but I still have it and I was very hesitant about purchasing this one and I kept going back and forth. I was like, do I really want to smell like everybody? But it was just so good and it's obviously Baccarat Rouge because I feel like you all know about it and I did purchase the big size because it just made more sense in terms of value. Um, this is a really feminine smell. And as you can tell, I really like it. I'm like already more than halfway through it. Um, but I do love to change this up a little bit and mix it with another one, which is very strong. It is literally such a loud perfume. And it's uh, from Mason's, uh, Mason Kirkjian again, and it's called Oud. And I feel like um, this one is more of like a cologne. This is really woody, spicy, and really masculine. Um, it is a very strong scent and I feel like this will last you for days I mean you'll spray it on and you can still smell it on yourself a day later um, Just as if you like just sprayed it on so um, this again is very very strong and um, Proceed with caution on this one because it just really does have a strong lingering smell The first time I actually sprayed this on myself. I was like, oh, why did I buy this? It was so um, overpowering but then the more I sprayed it the more I felt like you just need to kind of um, use it very very lightly and not go crazy with it because um, it'll give you a headache if you really go intense with this smell but I really do like that too so I do mix these two together and um, a few sprays of this and one spray of that just to change it up, just because I don't want to smell like everybody else, but I really do like that scent. So some of the notes in the Baccarat are Jasmine, Saffron, Cedarwood, um, Amber, Ambergris, I don't know how to say that, 
Um, and it's a very popular smell again. Like I said, it is very intoxicating. I feel like this is something that you can spray on and it's just very mature. Um, but like a good kind of mature, not like your grandma's perfume mature. So yeah, very light and airy, but at the same time, very rich. This next perfume is something I bought without smelling it. And it was something that I probably went back and forth on like 50 times. I put it in my cart and then I would just like disappear on it for like a month and then come back to it. The description I heard and the notes I read for it just spoke to my heart. And I was like, I really want it. This is from Serge Lutens and it's called Fumeri Twerk. I think that's how you pronounce it. First of all, the bottle is so beautiful and luxurious and this is something that oh, it's so like woody and so strong. It kind of reminds me of the oud that I just showed you, but when you let this set, it really becomes more of a pleasant smell. I feel like it kind of reminds me of the Frederick Mall perfumes where they're so strong, but at the same time, some of them are so good. Um, this is one of those, and I feel like you just have to be very light-handed with this. You can't go like bathing in it, as I do with some of my other perfumes, just because it's so strong. It's so dominant. It's kind of like a, it could be like a cologne. The undernotes of this remind me of like a wooden fire in wintertime, um, just like by the fireplace and it just smells so good. This next perfume is something I thought I would never gravitate towards because I feel like, first of all, it's very strong. And secondly, I'm not really into fruity smells. Now, some people I talk to believe that this reminds them of like a bathroom spray. Um, but to me, it is such a delicious smell. And I think I like it because I do really like peachy smells, but it's Tom Ford's Bitter Peach. It's very strong and it's super super peachy like I mean I got the small one because I was kind of really hesitant about it I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it but I smelled it at Sephora and I was like that's actually so addictive like it smells so good so I did end up getting the small bottle and I'm almost done with it but I don't know I, it's one of those perfumes where I feel like it's such a unique scent. The strongest scent that comes through, the, the strongest note that comes through is the peach that I feel like you can't really smell anything else in there. But it's so pretty and it's just, it smells so good to me. Um, I am going to show you guys something that I found that's a dupe for this. And it really is a dupe. I mean, if, you, if there was a dupe that ever existed, it has to be this. And it is the ALT Peach Smash Number 20. So I'm sure you guys have heard of this brand. It's pretty much like the dupes of all the expensive perfumes. And I was at a store and I realized, you know what? Let me just try it. They were like 20 something bucks um, or even like 30 something bucks. I don't remember. But obviously you can compare it to the three to $500 bottles. Um, and I wanted to try the peach one because I already had the actual perfume. I wanted to see if it smelled similar. And I kid you not, it is identical. The only thing about this, now I don't know if this is in my head or if this is something that's actually um, an ingredient in there that does that, but when I do spray the fake one, I feel like I get a headache. I'm not sure if it's something in there that causes that to happen or if it's just a mental thing because I know it's not the real thing, but I feel like this one kind of sets on your skin and it, it just never gives me a headache, although it's still very strong, but this one just somehow ends up I don't know, just doing something to me mentally. But putting the headache aside, because it might just be something that I get, um, I could seriously put my life on the fact that this is the same exact perfume that they put in the Tom Ford bottle. They just overpriced this because of the name. So that's why I ended up getting um, the F and Fabulous um, from ALT as well, which is the Tom Ford one. And I, I don't understand what the whole deal is about that particular perfume because I feel like it just it doesn't smell good to me um, I don't like the way it smells so I was like okay let me just get like the fake one and see if it actually smells good and I you could tell I haven't even worn it because I sprayed it once and I was like no not it and uh, I also got I think it's called um, this one Nick something I mean they changed the names obviously here but um, I believe this one was the vanilla one um, from Tom Ford and it's like supposed to be a dupe for it and I haven't used any of them Because I just I don't like the smells, but I know that they smell identical to the actual perfumes So 
So if you want to try any of these perfumes, but you don't want to spend three, four hundred dollars, then I definitely recommend this brand uh, because they really do have a dupe for almost every single luxury uh, perfume. These next perfumes are from Killian. One is called um, Love Don't Be Shy and the other one is Rolling in Love. And I bought these very spontaneously just going through the counter and they were like, oh, do you want to test this out? And I said, oh, why not? Let's, let's see what they smell like. And I ended up getting both of them because I couldn't decide which one I liked. Rolling in Love is this red one and it's about $265. And then this one is $310 for this bottle. They're both the same size. I guess it's just depending on the scent. And uh, this is not the reason I bought it, but the guy was saying that this used to be apparently Rihanna's favorite uh, perfume um i'm not sure if it was this one or this one but um he was saying that you know that's why it became popular because rihanna was obsessed with this perfume for years i love the bottles and i love the packaging this one is more this one's a very feminine smell and it's very giving vibes of like This is giving more like florally vibes, but it does have notes of almond milk, iris, and musk in there. Again, it has musk, which is why I absolutely love it. And then this one is more powdery. So I feel like it has like a little bit of a powdery residue at the end. And it has notes of neroli, I think that's how you say it, orange blossom, and rose. And again, like I said, I've been very much gravitated towards these scents. I honestly didn't even know what the notes in this were when I smelled it. But now looking back, it makes sense because I do love anything that has rose or orange blossom in there as well. So this is actually, this bottle's completely done. So um, I don't know if I'll repurchase it, but um, this is something that's very soft and it has a very sweet after smell. This next perfume, I think I'm just addicted to because this is my like fifth bottle. And well, there are other ones that I've bought multiple times, but this particular one is just so, oh, I can't even put into words the way that it smells. It's so unique. It's so like something I've never smelled before. It kind of, not that it reminds me of the Greenwich Village, but it's just such a unique scent like it that there's no other ones like it, in my opinion. And it's from Perfumes de Marley, and it's called Delina. This one is just so... Oh, every time I wear this, my husband's like, what is that? What are you wearing? And I feel like it's one of those scents that you can't ignore. Like, if someone passes by and they're wearing this, you're probably, even if it's a stranger, you're probably gonna be like, Wait a minute, what are you wearing? Because it's so rich and yet so feminine and just so fierce that I feel like it just catches attention anywhere you go. I mean, I bathe in this literally because it just, it's, it, it might be one of my all time favorite perfumes. This bottle is a decent size and it does run $335. So it definitely is more on the expensive side. So some of the top notes in this are Bergamot, Leech Accord. I think a lychee, lychee Accord, I don't know. Uh, and nutmeg. And then the middle notes are Turkish Rose, vet Vetiver, Vetiver, I don't know, Cedarwood, and Incense. Uh, and then the base notes are my favorite, Vanilla, Musk, and Cashmere. Cashmere on? Is that how you say it? Cash, cashmere on. I don't know. Some of these stuff I feel like are things that I can't pronounce, but either way, it's such a gorgeous, luscious smell, and um, super feminine. The next perfume is another one that I kept going back and forth on because I feel like, again, it was so talked about and so many people own it that I wasn't sure I wanted to smell like anybody else. But I still decided to get it because I sprayed it on myself. At first, I wasn't sure how I felt about it. But as I walked through the store and I kept smelling it, I was like, okay, I have to go back. I have to go back because this reminds me of something and I couldn't pinpoint what it was. When I was in my teens, my dad had this cologne and it was called Fahrenheit. And I remember every time I would smell it, I would just be like intoxicated. Like the smell was so good. And I feel like this reminded me of like a lighter version of that. So it's finally like clicking, like that's what it reminds me of. And it's such a, I feel like you just want to like inhale this. It's so good. And I think they're so genius in the way that they mark their bottles and they put your name on it. This is from Le Labo, by the way and um, they put your name on it. They write like when you purchased it, it's just so personable. Some of the notes in there are cardamom, iris, violet, sandalwood. Sandalwood is another one of my favorite, favorite notes. Um, it's very spicy and leathery at the same time and it has a lot of musk notes in there. Last year when my husband and I were in Nashville, we were sitting at our hotel bar one day and 
this girl passed by to sit down and I feel like my husband just went like what was that smell so he kept saying babe ask her what perfume she's wearing it smells so good I've never smelled anything like it and I was like okay it's kind of awkward to ask someone randomly a stranger you know what perfume are you wearing but I was like, you know what, let me just ask her. So she actually got up again and I was like, excuse me, um, what perfume are you wearing? It smells really good. And she gave me like some random name that I had never heard before, but I was like, let me write this down because it, you know, if my husband really likes it, then I wanna have the perfume. So the two perfumes, well, initially it was just one of the perfumes and it's from uh, Henry Rose. I had never heard of this brand before and it's called Queens and Monsters. I mean, what a name. I was like, oh, okay, like, I wonder what that is. So when I put it in, it's like $120. So I was like, okay, um, I'm ordering it right now. By the time we got back, this had arrived and I feel like he's so right. It is such a unique scent. I feel like this is a very fresh scent, which is something usually I don't gravitate towards, but it does have a very sweet after smell. This one has a main note of sandalwood, which makes sense because I love that. And overall, it's just a very fresh, but very sweet smell. And I really like the sample of Dark is Night from the same line. So of course I had to order the actual bottle for it. This was also $120. The main notes in this are patchouli and vanilla bean. And this one is more um, of a mature scent compared to the other one. So this one is more fresh and younger, I feel like, and this one is a little more wintry. So I would wear this in the summertime and I would wear this in the wintertime. I have a lot of other perfumes that I just, I'm obsessed with. Montal is one of my favorite ones. The first one I ever tried and I had gotten it as a gift is Rose's Musk. And it's like very, very um, florally and rosy but it's also very spicy and delicious. I'm just obsessed with this scent. But to kind of bring it down just a little bit, I love to mix it with the Tom Ford Rose Prick because they're both rose. And um, like one spray of this on two sprays of this is like the most amazing smell ever. Um, it's just, this is like a concoction that I live by and it kind of depends on where I'm going, what I'm wearing, what my mood is for this, but it's so light and airy and fresh at the same time very um sexy now i'm gonna take us back a few years ago well many many years ago actually um and i'm gonna just share some of my most favorite perfumes that i grew up on and i was in my teens when i started wearing this and i i feel like every time i wear these perfumes it just takes me back into this like young um energetic like just i don't know it takes me back to such a good feel time and i'm just obsessed with these smells the first one and i mean don't laugh at me but i literally just purchased because sometimes i feel like i can't find it so i literally have four bottles because i was like if they ever discontinue this i'm screwed because i'm this is like cotton candy heaven okay if you don't like sweet smells, sorry, but this smell, oh my goodness, it takes me back to like prom. It takes me back to when I was like 17 and 18. And the best way that I could describe this, it's like, it's like swimming in a pool of cotton candy mixed with vanilla, mixed with like chocolate. <sighs> it smells so good. I could literally live in this smell. If you put me in a room and spray this all over, I could live in there. And I didn't even say the name, but it's called Pink Sugar. I'm sure you guys are probably familiar with this. It's the type of perfume that you either love or hate because it could be very sweet for some people. Like I have a friend who will probably die if I put this on her. Um, but for me, it's just such comfort. It reminds me of like warm and cozy and fuzzy. And I could wear this in the wintertime. I could wear this in the summertime. I could go on and on about this because it is literally my signature scent the next scent that i die and melt over and drool over is gucci rush from gucci i feel like this this scent just gets me high i feel like when i spray this it takes me to this other universe filled with 
happiness and joy and oh, it's just so good. I mean, I literally feel like I enter a different dimension when I spray this on. And the funny thing is that my husband and I like the same smells. So yesterday he kept saying, oh my God, what is that smell? What is that smell? What is that smell? And I was like, I bought it. It was again from my teens and from like my early 20s. You know what like smells take you back to a certain time in your life that was a happy time? And when you spray it, you just start like living that life again. It just, I don't know, this smell does something to me. I wish I had like an endless, it's all like fingerprints, but I wish I had like an endless supply of this. Um, But yeah, this and this have to be my OG smells and they're so affordable and um, they smell like luxury. That's it for today. I do have a whole tray of other perfumes that we'll keep for a different day. I have a bunch of other Montals that I absolutely love, like Intense Cafe and all that. Um, but we're gonna stick to these today because these are my favorite ones. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below for all future videos.